Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Dane reads. It is currently Wednesday the 18th of August. It is my mum's birthday on Friday, so that's nice. Um, starting midweek because I haven't vlogged for a few days. Life has been hectic. Well, let's think. Um, thinking back to the weekend, what did I do at the weekend? I think I just worked all weekend. Did I even go out? No, I didn't go out. I just, my sleeping pattern has been kind of knackered for a little while. Uh, so I was like pretty much nocturnal and, and like getting getting up for the day at like 6 a.m. and stuff um, So over the weekend I kind of just worked a lot and caught up with some work and then reset my sleeping pattern So that's worked quite well So actually it's currently like half nine and this is probably the latest I've been up since Saturday um, But yeah, I've been doing lots of reading. I finished reading um, So the last one I read Corrings by Stephen Colgan. This was very good. Four out of five. Full review coming soon. It's like black comedy set in an English village, basically. Then I read Man of Letters by Spike Milligan, which is literally a collection of his letters. Uh, it was surprisingly interesting. So I think the, the reason is, is because it's not um, not like super dense or whatever. Even some of them are like scanned in and stuff. So I read this in like two days or something, which was pretty fast for a letter collection. I've been keeping it as one of my bedtime books. Um, but because I realised it wasn't going to take too long, I thought I'd just go ahead and read it. And uh, yeah, like a look, 3.5 out of 5 was alright. Uh, kind of interesting because he was a sufferer of bipolar disorder and he used to write a lot of letters, including to people, just like general members of the public who also had bipolar and wrote to him. Uh, a lot of animal rights stuff as well. So yeah, some good stuff, some bad stuff. I'm now reading Extraterrestrials by Isaac Asimov, so this is... Basically his case for there being life in the universe, but he doesn't mean like little green men and stuff like that. So kind of science based look at uh, whether there is an intelligent life or indeed any life out there. So this is going all right. Um, so I'll probably finish this off tomorrow and then start On a Distant Ridge Line by Sam Reese, which is a collection of short stories I've been sent by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Press. So shout out to Isabel, thanks for sending that to me. Uh, after that, I'm probably gonna try and read the Howard Marks book of dope stories. I'm running out of unread books. I mean, I think I'm literally now on 28 or 27 owned but unread books, which is like a pretty much a record low for me. Uh, I'm gonna try and get into single figures, I think we'll see. I mean, it'd be kind of cool if I get to a point at which I'm pretty much buying books because I need a new book to read, you know? So then at that point, I'd be constantly buying a book that I wanted to read. I'd be in the mood to read that book and go buy it, you know, rather than at the moment I'm kind of working through books that I've had for like 10 years or so and just never got to for one reason or another. So it's a bit of a slog sometimes. But yeah, there is that. Uh, house news, there is no news. Um, the, the, the We're waiting for stuff from the seller's lawyers basically, but it's now been four weeks that we've been waiting for responses from them. I know that the seller sent the responses to the questions on the day the questions arrived, which was four weeks ago and his lawyers have just been fannying about not forwarding them over to my lawyers. And I have the answers, but can't give them to my lawyers. It has to come from the seller's lawyers. So we're just waiting for them to send an email, basically. But they did today finally send him um, a copy of a form that he needs to fill out, so it feels like we're getting somewhere. I'm gonna be honest, I mean, the move-in date was supposed to be the 27th, which is nine days from now. That is looking extremely unlikely. If it's not done by the end of September, then I have to pay an extra three and a half grand in stamp duty. So really hope they do it then. But this, the seller's lawyer has finally, when he sent these contracts over today, which the seller's already returned today, uh, he said there's no reason why we can't have it done by the end of next week. So we'll see. I don't believe that at all. Because trust me, fam, if you'd, if you'd work with these people, you would understand. It's basically paying them a load of money to sit around and do nothing. And like, I'm having to do half the work here. It's ridiculous. But yeah, um, other stuff, uh, there is a gig on Friday, Maz Manzini and Alex Q, two local musicians are both playing at the Rose and Crown just around the corner, so I'm thinking about going to that. But we'll see, because also my band, The Ilk, we have gigs on Saturday and Sunday, we've got a different drummer for each of the two gigs, so that should be interesting. One of them is a guy we've never played with before, but we only got offered this gig today, uh, so it's Wednesday and they offered us this gig on Saturday. It's at a beer festival, we get free beer and free food, except I don't drink and I'm vegan, and I doubt the food will be vegan, so who knows. But that's the plan for this weekend, and I think that's about all I've got for you today. I'm gonna to go and try and film a few other bits, and we'll see where we get to. Hello, it is 7.15 p.m. on Thursday, the 19th of August. Uh, I finished reading uh, Extraterrestrial Civilizations by Isaac Asimov, 3.5 out of 5. 
I feel like some of the science in it might already be superseded, but I mean, that's the risk because Asimov wrote a lot about like cutting edge science. He even, I think that he mentioned it in that book, uh, The Oceans of Venus that he wrote. When he wrote that, it was believed there might have been oceans on Venus and then two years later it was discovered there definitely aren't. Uh, but yeah, interesting little read. I'm now reading on a distant red. red I'm now reading on a distant ridgeline. Stories by Sam Reese. This was sent to me by Isabel Kenyon. Short story collection. Whizzing through it. Um, about a third of the way through it, and I only started it today. So I'll finish this either today or tomorrow, and then I'm going to read Howard Marks's dope stories. I think it's just started raining as well. Uh, the bin men finally came today, so I managed to get rid of my big stack of rubbish outside, which was nice. Downside is, still nothing about the house, man. Hello everybody, it is 10.55pm on Monday the 24th of August. 23rd of August, sorry, I was close. Uh, I guess we're just, we're just going to keep this reading vlog going and do another two weeker. Because uh, I haven't been doing a lot of updates. I've just been, and again, I've been doing loads of extra work, putting loads of extra hours into that. Uh, this weekend was quite a good one. So, uh, what did I? Oh, on Friday, I went to see uh, Maz Manzini and Alex Q perform at the Rose and Crown. So, these are some local musicians, uh, good friends with, with Maz, and I've known Alex for a while as well. So, it's nice to go and see those. Uh, also, so Maz is, uh, he used to do an acoustic jam at the Rose and Crown, and that was the last event that I went to pre COVID. Um, and there hasn't been any live music on at the Rose and Crown since, so it was just nice to, you know, feel a bit back to normal. Um, so that was good, and then I got back from that, and then there was some drama with the Art Centre, which I'm not going to go into here, but yeah, basically that was annoying. Uh, but it's not the Art Centre's fault, it's one person in particular's fault. Um, so anyway, then Saturday, I uh, didn't sleep well on Friday night, but a lot of that was because I knew I had a busy weekend. So Saturday, uh, my band, The Ilk, we played for an hour at uh, Beer, Bubbles and Bands, uh, which was a mini festival at the Black Horse Inn in Chesham, which was very nice. Uh, so the set went really well. We were playing with a new drummer called Tom, um, who basically, because we got this gig really last minute and our regular drummer wasn't around, so we just asked around and Tom sort of stepped up to, to play, so that was great. Uh, really enjoyed doing that and uh, we got some free food so I got some like a free vegan burger and a few free drinks and stuff so that was great and then on Sunday uh, we played again at Lane End Live um, so I think there were probably about 200 people at the first gig and about 250 at the second so both pretty big gigs and um, both seemed to go really well people loved it did some songs it was great so that brings us to today normally I have my counseling on Mondays but basically this week my counselor's away and next week is a bank holiday Monday, so I'm not speaking there again till the week after that. Uh, but I do have some homework to do, so I'm going to crack on with that. I uh, made some pasta earlier, because Marks and Spencer do this really nice vegan pasta. Um, it's like no bacon and no chicken pasta, uh, but it's £3.50 for each one. So I just made like a huge serving of my own take on it, and it was delicious. So there was that. Um, house news. We've had some responses from the seller's lawyers, but they still haven't responded to the main issue that's the sticking point. They said they were going to respond to it later today. This was after saying they would do it every day of last week as well. Still haven't done it, so we're just still waiting for that. And the landlord's trying to say that it's my fault or my lawyer's fault for being like too, uh, what was it? He was saying we're being paying too much attention to detail and um, uh, doing too much due diligence. And it's like, well, mate. The problem is literally that the contract says one thing and a registry says another thing and uh, basically my, my mortgage providers have said they won't provide me with a mortgage unless they fix it and the land, the seller and his legal guy basically just seem to be hoping that it's going to go away and it's like well it's not, you have to fix it and also you'd have the same problem with anybody else. Anybody who's getting a mortgage will have this problem. The only way that they could avoid it would be if they sold cash um, but the mortgage provider is always going to raise questions about it. Anyway, bit of a nightmare. Still don't know if slash when I'm moving. Basically that's the last thing. So once they sort that we can exchange contracts and finally get a fucking date and so we'll see. Uh, I finished reading For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. This was a four out of five, although a fairly weak one but still very good. Sort of classic Hemingway really. It's set during the Spanish Civil War which I believe he himself either fought in or he might have covered it as a journalist or something like that. The main plot of this is about blowing up a bridge but there's also a love story in it. You know me, I'm not that big into love stories but I still thought it was okay and I saw the point of having it there. Ending was very predictable though, I will, I will say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall pretty good. Nicely written, 4 out of 5. And so I'm now reading 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari. 
Uh, this was sent to me by a client because it's got some stuff about artificial intelligence and machine learning in healthcare. And my client, uh, you know, I've worked with him on a book called The Future of Healthcare and we've done some other sort of forward looking healthcare stuff. So that's why he sent me this. I'm enjoying it so far, it's sort of very readable. It is basically like 21 short essays. Hello everybody, busy couple of days. It's currently 9.20 p.m. on Saturday the 28th of August. Um, yeah, my computer died earlier this week, so I bought a new computer, and then my computer decided to fix itself. So now I have two working desktops, my Mac, uh, and my laptop as well. So uh, the plan is basically once I get the new house, I'll have my office room, uh, which I'll have the new PC in, and then the old PC can go in the living room so that, you know, at night time I can go and sit on the sofa with the cat and uh, carry on writing and stuff. Oh, did you hear me talking about you, Biggie? He's just come out behind the curtains. Come on then, come and say hello. Um, in terms of news, I've uh, been busy with the art centre, so on Thursday I was there, uh, there was a wedding taking place, so I was working from the office. Uh, getting some bits done and like just being there as a point of contact if they needed me. Catch you order, get it set me off. Uh, then yesterday we had films at Wickham Arts Centre, so we screened uh, Belleville, Bellevue Rendezvous. Bell, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, Belleville or Bellevue, I can't remember. Um, which is like a French animated film. Um, very little dialogue in it so I didn't really get to practice my French and I was behind a curtain so I couldn't see the screen but again I was just working from my laptop and then today we had me, uh, Caribbean music in the garden with a local DJ doing some music and we're running the bar and stuff there so that was fun uh, I'm now back home cracking on being productive getting the new computer all set up and stuff bit of reading I've got these floppy boy oh 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 okay 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 put you down okay. good boy um, and then tomorrow is the Sunday Jam, so I'll be going to that. Myself and Dave will probably be playing. And then my friend Jordana's having some leaving drinks because she's going to Brighton, so I'm going to swing by the Bellevue, uh, which is a pub near us. Uh, just going to swing around there for just a quick non-alcoholic drink or whatever and then head off just to show my face in. Other than that, cracking on and being productive. One of the good things about getting this new computer is that it did come in a massive old box as well. So I've got another big box that I use. I've now got the equivalent of like two bookcases worth of stuff to pack. Um, and then it's just like all of the last minute bits, like my kitchen stuff and, you know, computer and whatever else that I need to use all the time. But uh, yeah, very exciting. I finished reading Blackwater Town by Paul Waters. It was like 3.5 out of 5 in the end. Okay, I did, it did drag a little bit for me to be honest, but also there were some really good twists and turns and some action in it. It's like um, a thriller novel slash police procedural novel, but set during the troubles in Ireland with the IRA and stuff. So uh, yeah, full review of that coming soon. And now I think I'm gonna start reading God Emperor of Dune by Frank Herbert, because it's the next Dune book for me. Hello, there is a cat down here. Biggie, do you wanna say hello to the camera? Boop, 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 boop. Here he is. Oh, Biggie. Hello. Sorry, did I interrupt you while you were playing with your toy? Did I? You wanna go down? Yeah, pop you down then. There you go, you play with your toy some more. Um, where are we? Yeah, it's Monday. It is 9.49pm uh, on Monday the 30th of August. Bank holiday here in the UK. I slept until like 4pm. Whoops. Um, and yeah, because it's bank holiday, no house news to report because the lawyers are closed. My lawyer's on holiday anyway. The seller's now going on holiday as well. So that's not looking particularly good for this week, but I'll keep the pressure going. Um, updates wise, I uh, had quite a busy weekend. So I was at loads of art centre events. So Thursday there was a wedding, so I was literally working from the office while these people had a wedding party. Um, just so that I could be on call if they needed anything and then I locked up afterwards. Friday we had uh, films at Wickham Arts Centre so we screened Belleville Rendezvous which is a French animated movie. I didn't get to practice any of my French. Basically where I sit during the screenings is a curtain across that separates the bar from the actual screening. So I can't see so I can only ever hear and there was basically no dialogue so all I could hear were just sound effects for like two hours. But hey ho, got lots of work done. Saturday we had music in the garden, we had Caribbean music in the garden uh, with a local DJ, so that was nice. And again, did some more work. And then Sunday we had the Sunday Jam, and again, I did a little bit more work. Played there as well, which was nice. We did four songs, so we did one of my originals called Lean Down On Me, and then we did three Bob Dylan covers. So we did Knocking On Heaven's Door, All Along The Watchtower, and Maggie's Farm. 
so that was fun um, and yeah because of all that I'm pretty like up to date with all of my art centre stuff there's only one or two things really on my list and they're more like admin things that don't need to be rushed so I'm working on other clients this week um, after the Sunday Jam, we went to the Bellevue, a few of us from the Jam went along to the Bellevue, um, not the Belleville Rendezvous, the Belleville, Bellevue, Bellevue, Belle, 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 Belle. yes, um, it is a pub on the other side of town, one of my friends basically was having a combined birthday and leaving party, so we went there, but I didn't see her too much. Uh, Fran, who's my boss at the Arts Centre, she made these really delicious vegan cakes, they were like, it was an old, it was a Czech recipe that she veganised and it got plums in them yeah plums oh my god it was so good um she gave me like a tupperware box that was like layered with two layers of these things and i did to be fair i was giving them out to people but also the whole box just got demolished they were so good because they were super light as well so like my uh, my other boss ruth at the art center she made a chocolate cake for me for my birthday and it was delicious but you could only eat like one slice of it and then you were full whereas with Fran's one it was just like i had like eight slices of it man it was it was great so yeah, then we went to Bellevue, came back around closing time, cracked on, did some work, went to sleep at 5am this morning. Uh, I have to be at the art centre at 10am tomorrow for someone dropping off some posters, so I might just stay up all night. And I was talking to Fran, and um, well, she's going through some shit at the moment, like personal shit that obviously I, I can't talk about here. Um, but she's been feeling a bit lonely because she has a kid who's like, he's 18 months old now. I was reading to him at the, the Sunday, the, no, the Music in the Garden, I was reading a book to him, a little book about animals. So that was cute. But um, because of that, she, basically her life revolves around the kids, so she's been feeling a bit lonely, so we're gonna make it a tradition once a week to either go for coffee or for breakfast or for lunch. Um, so I'll probably meet up with her later this week and we'll start that tradition, which would be nice, because I don't really go out for food much. So um, yeah, I'm excited. We probably will go for lunch because it's harder to find vegan breakfasty places, you know? Um, and we only ever really see each other at the art center, so it'll be nice just to chill out outside of work and you know, just be friends, so, so that'd be good. Because um, actually, when I went to the Bellevue on a Sunday, uh, somebody who's joined us as a barmaid, she came along to that. Um, so that was nice, again, just get some, kind of hanging out with her, getting to know her a bit outside of work. Because you don't get to talk too much, because obviously if you're running a bar, people are constantly coming up ordering drinks, or there's always something that needs doing, so. So yeah, that should be nice. I watched Round Island with a Fridge earlier, which is based on the uh, book by Tony Hawks, and he was in the movie and wrote it and stuff. It actually wasn't particularly good, um, but the book was great, so there's that. Uh, and I'm currently now watching Fantastic Voyage with Raquel Welsh in it, so it's from 1966, and I recently read the Isaac Asimov novelization of it. Um, and, and again, the book was better, even though the movie came first in this particular instance. Uh, bedtime wise I'm reading the Howard Marks book of dope stories it's getting a little bit better but it's still got the same problem where it's not really a book of dope stories it's a book of excerpts from stories that mention dope so like you would expect from a book of dope stories that you'd have like maybe 20 short stories in there this has probably got 250 and it's got like half a page to three pages from each book so it's like it's just excerpts, it's like reading a quote dictionary or something rather than actually reading a short story anthology. You can't get involved in any of the stories because all you get is the, just the, this description of dope and then it got changed to someone else. So it's like you can't get involved in the characters or the wider picture, it's just literally just people talk about dope. Um, which is a shame because I like Howard Marks' actual books, but this, I don't know, seems like a cash grab to me. So that's why it's a bedtime book. Uh, main book, I'm reading God Emperor of June by Frank Herbert. It's on course for a 4 out of 5, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's batshit crazy. Uh, it takes place, I think we're like a millennia or two after the original June books now as well. So, um, like all of the characters are dead. Duncan Idaho's knocking about, but it's like a clone. But it's like the 15th clone of him. Uh, Leto Atreides II, Paul's son, he's around but he's basically mostly become a giant sandworm. It's, it's as mad as it sounds, but in a really good way. Um, and actually, I feel as though this series is actually getting better as it goes along. Uh, the, the first, like just June, there was a big bit in the desert for like 200 pages where nothing happened. So it's nice now we've got past a lot of the world building and stuff is actually happening. I mean, I got a June tattoo as well. Oh, I'm thinking about getting my next tattoo. I'm thinking about trying to squeeze in up here, uh, Pennywise. Like, Pennywise, knocking about up here, balloons coming up here. I only have like, that's probably about an inch and a half between the writing tattoo there and the end of Vivi there. So, 
I might not be able to squeeze him in. If not, maybe over here, more over my elbow or something. I don't know. I've got some, yeah, I've got some space there. I have him on the back of my arm. So, um, yeah, because this is my colourful tattoo arm, and then this is my black and white tattoo arm. Um, and I have a tan, apparently. You can only pick it up in the lights. Eventually, I probably will get like more of my forearm and stuff done as well, but, um, you know, slowly but surely. So that's what's going through my head at the moment, and this seems like a good place to love you and leave you. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.